Right, no <laughs> chair by you or anything? No, this one's good, I think. Okay, and that's the right height and everything? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Hi guys, if anyone's on, we're just doing a check right now to make sure everything is good to go. So hopefully the sound is good. Hopefully the volume is up all the way. I'm always leery of touching any buttons on this because I don't want it to freak out on me. I'm waiting for the, the heads up that everything is good. I hope everyone's doing well. Was it good, Dad? Did you see it? Was the sound good? Yes. Sound is good? Do you think I should use the little microphone yes, just in do. case? All right. Yeah. We're going to get a microphone. So peaceful. <laughs> we still have a couple minutes. Yeah. We're ahead of schedule. Good. We have one minute. Good. That's what I'm going to need. I know she's asleep at the top of her head. <laughs> I'm sure I did something dumb. No, that's all right. That's all right. Still, 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 still away. <laughs> yep, that's perfect. This way. Yep. We did it. <laughs> This should be good. Is that how you do it? Yeah, I always have my text do stuff <laughs> because. Is that good? I think it's fine. Yep, you it looks you, good. You com feeling comfortable in that position? I feel good. All right, guys. Thank you for being patient. <laughs> Any of you that are already logged on. All right, we're just gonna get the, the heads up that the volume is good. The thumbs up. All right, what is it? It's Thursday, it is October. It's almost the last week in October. Almost November. Hi, Teresa. Sounds good? All right, good. <clears throat> All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Father. I ask you to speak through me, Lord, whatever you want 
to be spoken. Father, I yield myself completely to you and to your spirit and the word that I have put in my heart. Lord, I thank you for bringing it to my remembrance, for bringing it up, bringing it up. So whatever anybody needs to hear, Lord, they are going to hear what you are speaking to them, Lord. They have eyes to see. They have ears to hear, Lord. I thank you for flooding us with you, flooding us with your light, your love, your revelation. God, without you, we can do nothing. We are so thankful for you, Father. We're so thankful for your love, for your covenant of grace. We praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I was thinking today about man, all of the different situations that we face and how stressful life can be. And just the little things in life when just walking and, you know, having a good attitude. Like generally I'm a pretty positive, optimistic person and just how unexpected things can happen, you know, like I'll tell you like my day today, I got up really early to pray a little bit and I took chase to walk a dog at like seven so it's pretty early but I was glad because if I'm not forced to get up then I don't always do it but it was nice to be up and to pray spend time with the Lord so I, I did that and then I was praying a little bit and I fell asleep on the chair in the living room because it was so quiet <laughs> and then I had to get ready to go to work to go to the gym where I'm typing uh, Emma's story and then I taught a class and then I continued to type Emma's story and then I went home and it was kind of chaos there because they were all playing with Legos. That was good, but there was peace at home. I prayed before I left. I'm like, you guys, shalom at home. And I always tell them, you know, because sometimes it's harder for men to deal with the children. Um, I'm like, if nothing else, I just want peace and, and I want you to have a good relationship. You know, we can do the schoolwork and stuff when I'm around so I can be a mediator. <laughs> so they had been playing with Legos, so it was kind of a big mess, but clean that up. And then we just had errands to run, you know, taking care of dogs, doing all of this little stuff. And let's see. Oh, and then I had to run and take the boys to soccer. And we went over to Gretchen's and Elia had a little incident where he got, uh, he got kicked pretty hard in the head on accident. And his ear like pff, tore away a little bit from his head. And I mean, it was like, everything's going normally and peaceful. And all of a sudden this happened. And like, as a mother, this is one of the things that kind of catches me off guard. You know, I'm like, oh. like, you just feel instantly nauseated when something happens, you know, cause it was bleeding. It was okay. But I did call Corey Robillard. Corey Robillard is like one of my go-to people for like injuries with kids or when my husband was having um, chest pains. Cause he's an EMT. He's been one of my really, really good dear friends for so long. And I feel so honored to have, it's so good to have someone that you can call that kind of just reassures you. Because in those moments, you know, I pray in the spirit, I'm praying for him and I'm like, oh my goodness. You know, and I know what can you do with an ear like that? It wasn't like hanging off, but it was, it's a, it was away from the head. And so Corey looked at him my, with my phone and he just gave me the assurance that it was okay and that I was doing the right thing. And I think it's important to have people in your life that you feel comfortable just talking to and getting that confirmation because our minds get bombarded with all kinds of things, you know, with just even the little struggles in life. And to know that you are not alone, that everybody is struggling with things. You know, people have arguments with their husbands or their kids or can be disorderly and just, I mean, kids have their own personalities. So that right there is just a whole, a ball game that is very, I mean, it is a challenge. It's such a challenge. And, uh, you know, having relationships with uh, your mate, with other humans in the world, there are just all kinds of struggles that can happen, all kinds of conflict. And I am really learning as walk, walking in the Holy Spirit, you know, starting my day, even if it's just a few minutes saying, God, I want to be synchronized with your plan for me today. Lord, I want to walk in your will, what you want me to do in the midst of all of my normal challenges and all of the, the normal things you have to do in life. Lord, I want to be totally in sync with you. Because the scripture says that we are one spirit with him now. And um, 
Teresa talked about that in her study a few weeks ago, and it's, it's really profound. Study all the scriptures that you can on being one with the Spirit, being one with God, and it's going to just give your mind the revelation because your spirit already knows, but it's our mind that needs to be renewed. You know, we're transformed by the renewing of our minds, Romans 12. And as we get that transformation in our mind, reading it, the Bible, the Bible is transforming. It's not just like you're, uh, it's not that you're memorizing and just, it's not an earthly thing. It's supernatural. It's a supernatural transformation that happens when we take the word and we believe it. So we get transformed by that word. And then we have the re realization, the revelation that we are one with the Father. And so if we start our day like that, saying, God, I, I want to be one with you. I want your will. I want to walk in your ways, in your peace, your patience, in every situation. And situations are going to happen that, like I've been praying mostly all day in the Spirit and just reading the Bible in the Word, typing, you know, a book that is very supernatural because it's about Emma and God's miracle power in her life. So when, when accidents happen, sometimes we might think, oh, what did I do? Did I not prepare? Did I not put the hedge up around myself enough? You know, the enemy will come in and make you, he, he wants to condemn us. That's what his number one tool is accusation, is accusing and making us think that we don't do enough or we didn't pray enough. We don't, we're not saying the right thing. And so this message is about getting rid of all condemnation and all fear and accepting, completely accepting God's love and that he, he is not withholding anything from us. And when these things happen, you know, we're in a fallen world, things happen. It's, he is there and he can fix anything. You know, he can intervene. And we've, we've all had things that have happened that have blindsided us. You know, and in Elia's ear is just a little thing. But as a mom, it's like, it's a little traumatizing to me at the moment. It, it takes me a little bit to recover because I'm like, oh. you know, there's like a big bruise on his head and I'm looking at him, making sure his, he doesn't have a concussion because it was a pretty hard hit. You know, looking at his eyes, asking him all the questions. Like I said, getting confirmation from Corey. Um, so these things can blindside you. Is that what it's called, blindside? But we have to know that God, Romans 8, 28, God works all things out for good to those who love him. This is just a tiny thing, but I'm, just think about the things in your life that you might be struggling with. God does not cause anything bad to happen to us. You know, there's plenty of, there's just all kinds of stuff going on all the time. And you might walk directly into something that's totally chaotic. I was thinking about that one time at the farmer's market when Teresa, <laughs> I love this story. Uh, she was there and then the camel and the horse just started freaking out and she said, she just yelled, in Jesus' name, come back to the camel and, you know, whatever she said. But she was there and this crazy situation happened, but she took authority. And that's what we're supposed to do as believers. We are supposed to remember, and I don't want to say supposed to, we, we, I want us to get to the point where we are so confident in being one with the Father and in hearing His voice that we know what to do in every situation. We know exactly when, when something comes and it's, Whoa, I wasn't expecting that. Get quiet and just get listen to what the Lord is telling us because it is not complicated. It is easy to hear from Him. We had the Fearless Conference on last Saturday and it was so powerful. So many women were ministered to. I was incredibly ministered to. It was just, it's so wonderful to have people teach under the anointing and God just speaking to you. And Danielle's message was about it being easy with God. It's easy to hear from Him. It's easy. And I just, I was meditating on that and thinking it's easy to hear. It's easy to receive. It's easy to do the right thing. He doesn't make it complicated. You know, there's things that happen that we do not expect. Uh, just, there's all kinds of stuff. The other night, or actually for like a few days, my throat was... It was, it was like an attack from the enemy. I mean, it was so sore. It was like, like it was being crushed. And I'm standing on the word. I'm like, I'm healed in Jesus' name. You know, I took the clove oil, and I'm like, in the natural, we start to think, well, what did I do? Did I do something to cause this to happen? I'm like, you know what? 
I'm not even going to go there because the word says I'm healed. And I know that Jesus took my sickness. He took my pains. He took my sorrows. So I'm healed. I don't have to be perfect. I do not have to do everything right. I'm healed. And so I had to lead worship on Monday night. And you know, my throat was, but I just, I just kept standing and I didn't feel a change during worship. I didn't feel any pain. I went through it and it was, it was decent. (laughs) It wasn't absolutely horrible. And then after worship, I just, my throat was totally healed. I had no pain, nothing. And then at the end of the service, I was telling one of the girls or the women that goes, um, I was, we were talking and she said during worship, she felt like her throat was like, like being clamped on, like she couldn't sing in her neck. She just felt like this oppression. And she said, I couldn't even sing. I just had to stand. She took authority over. She said, in Jesus name, I am healed. No sickness can come upon my body. You know, she bound any, a weapon of the enemy and she got the victory. But I just realized, man, the enemy, he comes in and with symptoms and a lot of times he does it and will make us think that, oh, there's something wrong with you. You, you know, there's, this must be wrong. You need to go to the doctor. You need to get this checked out. But really, it's a lying symptom, you know. And, and our minds will think, oh, well, I did this. I did that. I probably taught about this before, but it bears repeating because I believe all of us go through these kinds of things where we just have these symptoms it could just be a random symptom. And if we hang on to it, if we cling on to it and be like, oh, I must have this, I must be sick, then that gives the enemy opportunity because our mouths are powerful. Remember, the Lord created the heavens and the earth with words. And if we are speaking, if we start speaking it out, well, I'm sick. Oh, I have, you know, I have this throat thing and I don't know, I'm going to have to go and get it checked out because the thought did cross my mind. I'm like, oh man, I'm kind of a rock and roll singer sometimes. And it's probably a node that I never took care of. Or, you know, I've read about other people having cysts and I had to cast those things down and say, no, no. Even if I did something, I am healed by the power of Jesus. The same power that rose Jesus. This is like my go-to scripture. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives in me and gives life to my mortal bodies. So I'll sit and meditate on it. Say, my spirit is perfect. And it has to manifest in this mortal body. It's not for when we're in heaven. In heaven, we're, gonna, we're not going to have any of these challenges, any of these struggles. We have perfect health. It's for now. The power of God is to manifest now on the earth. So it's not hard. It is not difficult. It is easy. But we have to de- decide. We have to side with God. Making a decision that I side with God no matter what. What his word says, that is what I'm going to have in my life. That is what I believe. At church lately, or maybe it was a few weeks ago, I just felt a really strong word from the Lord, and I didn't feel the opportunity to speak it. But the Lord was telling me how pleased he is with his people. Like I was looking at the group, and God was just saying, I am so pleased with my people. And he was saying, but some of you are not able to receive that. If, if God says, I'm pleased with you, there are some of you that are saying, oh, not me. It must be the other person that's so wonderful and doing all the right things. But God wants us to change that perspective. He is pleased with you. The, you, the one that thinks that you have not done everything right and, oh, I did this, so God cannot be pleased with me. No, God is pleased with you. Every single person I looked in the service of all the people, and I just felt God's heart. And in Hebrews eleven six, it says, um, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Those who come to him must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And everybody, you're going to church, you're reading your Bible, you're, you're making an effort to know him. And that is faith. That is what pleases him. When you are reaching out to him, and he is so pleased He's so pleased with us, and he wants us to get rid of the condemning voice. Romans 8. Read Romans 8 every day until you get it. It says that there is therefore now no condemnation. I believe this is two, to those who are in Christ Jesus. Now, I used to live kind of in Romans 7 with the Romans 7 mentality. You could read that, and I would think, because it's Paul, and he's it's a progression. He is so amazing, an amazing scholar. 
and the Holy Spirit just used his knowledge to to lay it out. In Romans 7, it says, um, the things that I don't want to do, I do. An old wretched man that I am, you know, I can't. And people get stuck in that, and they think, because they're so aware of the carnal nature of these, the draw to do what's wrong, or, you know, well, I, I want to get up and read my Bible, but I just sleep in. Or I want to eat healthy, but uh, I just grab bonbons. You know, they're just uh, so aware of the, the wrong, all of the things that they shouldn't be doing. And that's, you know, where I lived. I think most of us have lived there, um, where we just, we're focused on what we feel like our limitations are. Like, I cannot, I just, I can't do it. I'm always going to have the sinful nature to contend with. But at the end of Romans 7, I love it, it's so powerful. It says, Who's, who can help us, O wretched man that I am? And it says, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ. And this is the message that God wants us to know, that it's so simple. I'm going to read this scripture in Matthew because it just really blessed my heart. When I was reading it, it might have been today or yesterday, I'm not sure. I jump around the Bible a lot, just, uh, I, I love John 14, 15, 16, 17, the second Corinthians uh, 4 and Romans 8. And there's just a few that I really like to read a lot. But I was reading in Matthew 11. And let's see, it's 25. Then Jesus exclaimed, Father, thank you for you are Lord, the supreme ruler over heaven and earth. And you have hidden the great revelation of your authority from those who are proud and wise in their own eyes. Instead, you have shared it with those who humble themselves, these who humble themselves. And you know what humility is? There's many different definitions, but I believe that humility is, I need you, God. I, I need you desperately. I cannot do it on my own. I know I need you. And that pleases God's heart so much when we need him. It's like when your kids want you to help them or they, want, they just want to be with you. That's God's heart for us. He wants to be with us. And when we cry out and say, I need you, that's exactly like his his heart for us is to be with him and so that we could be co-heirs with Jesus so that we can be co-workers we can be joined with God and work together because relationship is so much better I mean you know this being alone it's not any fun if you don't have anyone to talk to anyone to share your dreams and uh, ideas with anyone that if you have no one to encourage you it's not so much fun but with with God. That's what he wanted, family. He wanted us to come to him and say, I need you, Father. Teach me, lead me, guide me. And he said, Jesus said that he hid all of these great mysteries from those that were proud. And the proud are those that say, I don't need God. I don't, you know, I can do it on my own. I'm fine without him. I am, I think about it sometimes. I'm very thankful for all the struggles that I've had. I wouldn't change them for anything, you know, growing up the way I did because it made me aware of my need for the Father. And it's such a sad place to me when I see people that say they don't need Him because it doesn't matter how perfect your life may seem. There's just nothing that fulfills like the Lord. But there's hope for them because the Lord showed me this a while ago and I'm like, man, I'm praying for people that they just seem like they don't want anything to do with God. I don't know, it's struggle. It's it's frustrating. And that's why we have the Ephesians prayers. It says, Father, flood them with light. Give them revelation, knowledge, and understanding of you. And so it's never hopeless. It's never hopeless. Um, I mean, I just met with one of my friends that I, we were best friends for many years. And I never thought, I, I mean, I, I just didn't know. And I kind of was, man, I should have prayed for her more. I didn't really think about it, but anyway. She wasn't walking with God for a lot of years, and I just talked with her, and she's been involved in her church for like a year. She found a really good church, a New Life church, and she's been drumming on the worship team. And this is someone that, man, for years just struggled with addiction and all kinds of things. And I'm like, oh, praise you, Lord. It's so awesome to see that. No one is ever hopeless. God doesn't give up on people, and we shouldn't either, because it can happen like in an instant miracles where people's eyes are just open and they see. I know for me, man, I was so desperate for anything. I was like, I, I was very, I've told you before, very suicidal. I was like, and it was oppression from the enemy. But God, man, he reached out to me and he, 
he, I mean, he totally changed my life, but he used people to do it. People that were praying and that had these programs for uh, teenagers that needed help. So we can make a difference in people's lives. Don't ever think that you are not making a difference. Someone that seems like the hardest case, they can be, there can be a turnaround. And that's, it's awesome. I'm telling you, this was like 20, this was like 28 years ago. 27 years ago and now she's I mean she's really seeking the Lord and you know praying and reading her Bible and serving and it was just unexpected like all of a sudden she came to visit and I'm like man praise the Lord she's doing good now let's read the rest of this your father yes father your plan delights your heart as you've chosen this way to extend your kingdom by giving it to those who have become like trusting children. God is extending his kingdom through us. He's giving it to those who have become like trusting children. God wants us to be like trusting children, and when he says something, we just believe it. We say, yes, Father, I believe it. Emotions, especially for us women, can really be a hindrance. <laughs> because, you know, our emotions are a blessing, but it can also, when we feel like, scared, nervous, you know, for our children, for someone that we love, for ourselves, God spoke to me and said that you need to take the promises like a man, like the men, like old school men, they'd be like, my word is my bond. And if another man shook hands with them and said, yep, I'm going to do this, I'm going to be here on this, at this time, on this day, then they just said, he's going to be there. He shook hands with me. Today, we don't have as much of that in our culture, but you know what I'm talking about, is that kind of, uh, it's honor. It's knowing that God is honorable, he's faithful, he's trustworthy, and he is going to do what he says he's going to do. He made it easy for us. He said, just believe, only believe. All things are possible, only believe. And so we have a choice. You know, we quiet our minds and all of the, the fear and the struggle and Ooh, and you just have to get your mind quiet and speak only what you know is true. And when you're feeling, like with Elio, when he got hit, I felt sick inside, like ooh, like nauseated, but I, I kept my composure. I'm like, I'm trying to pray for him, and he wouldn't want me to pray at first. He's like, it hurts so bad, it hurts so bad. You know, because the ear is a very painful spot. And even though I felt like nauseated, like, and there was blood, and I'm trying to see how bad it is, even though I felt that, I just, I had to speak. You know what, God, I know God is faithful. I know that he, this is going to turn out fine because I'm his child. And I have to remind myself that in these struggles because, you know, this is just a little struggle and I've had much bigger ones. But when things go unexpectedly, God is turning it around. He is turning it around for you. If you have something in your life that is kind of, you're like, why is this happening? What did I do? You know what? There's no condemnation in the Lord. It doesn't matter what you may have done. God is big enough to fix it and turn it around. We're going to end with the scriptures, but in Galatians 3, 5, it says, Did you receive the promise of the Spirit and the working of many miracles by observing all of the law, by, by observing the Torah, by doing everything right? No, you received by believing and having faith in Jesus Christ. There's many different translations. I want to read you some of them, but but God keeps bringing me back to this with whatever you're struggling with. It is, you know, the struggle. In Ephesians, it says, we do not struggle against flesh and blood. We struggle against powers, principalities, against rulers of the darkness in the heavenly realms. But a lot of times I think that we we, you know, we try to struggle against people, other people. We struggle against ourselves, like fighting, like, oh, there's something wrong with me. or, um, And that's a revelation right there, that we are not supposed to struggle with ourselves, not supposed to struggle with other people. When we have these conflicts, we need to get, get with God, get in the Word, and get His peace. If you are in a constant state of criticizing, condemning, accusing yourself, or other people, then we are in agreement with the enemy. Because it says the enemy is the accuser of the brethren. He accuses you. So if you start accusing yourself, then you're, you're in agreement with him instead of Jesus who says, 
I have made you completely righteous. I have washed away every sin, all of your guilt. And if you happen to sin, I will forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. When you confess it, all we have to do is say, Father, forgive me, and it's gone. Allie was so cute. She had this revelation. She said, Mom, your sins were forgiven even before you committed them. She was just writing things down, and I'm like, you're, that's, a, that's true. The Lord must have revealed this to you, for man did not reveal it. Because <laughs> she's just thinking, and, I, and it's, it's true. Before we ever sinned, God knew, and he made the way through Jesus. It's already done. It's enough. As John talked about, I think a couple weeks ago, we don't continue in sin. And Teresa talked about it too. We don't continue in sin. If there's something that you're struggling with that is a habitual sin, like you feel like you cannot get victory, then get prayer. Go up to the prayer team or go and talk to Pastor John or any one of the um, prayer, the elders, the prayer warriors, um, if you want to do it in private, because it could be an oppression. It could be something oppressive in your life, something that needs to be broken off, and we will break that off of you. In fact, right now, you could just receive from the Lord, Father, if there's anyone that's struggling with addiction, with something that they feel like they just can't get rid of, they feel like they're stuck in Romans 7, I I have right now in the name of Jesus, I break that habitual sin from you, from your family line. Any generational curse, any generational sin is broken in Jesus' name. By the blood of Jesus, they are free. I thank you, Father, for your freedom. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And any any oppressive spirit cannot stay. In the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, it has to go. And you need to speak this if you ever feel like you're just you're tempted to do something and you're in bondage and you you feel like you can't stop you you speak the blood of the name of jesus you say nope the blood of jesus i am free he set me free from this sin and you keep on confessing that and i'm telling you come to some of us if you need prayer but i believe that you're getting the victory and the breakthrough right now because whom the sun sets free is free indeed we are not in Romans 7 anymore. We're in Romans 8. We walk by the Spirit. It's easy. So if you're telling yourself that it's too complicated, I just, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to hear from God. Just need to quiet all of those voices and know that God is leading you. His peace leads you. Peace in every situation. I'm going to be quoting all of everybody. (laughs) Danielle said um, that she lives in the yes and listens for the no. And I, wanna, I want to have a book or something on the internet where people can read all of these quotes because this is powerful. Live in the yes, but listen for the no. What does that mean? It means that we're living in freedom. We're, we're seeking the Lord. We are walking with him. And so he, is, he has a resounding yes. His, it's like, yes, you are blessed. If you want to put your hands to something, and then trust that that's his will. If you have this desire, I want to do this. I want to help in this area. Should I do it? You know, let peace guide you. And he will tell you no if it's something you shouldn't do with any area of your life. You just get quiet. Lord, yes or no. Daniel did that with the, you choose life or you choose death with the hands. And I thought, that is so powerful because that's with everything. It's life or death. It's yes or no. What is God saying? It's so simple. God's not going to make it complicated, okay? With the whole summing up of the law and the prophets. How are we supposed to live towards other people? It's easy. We love them. Love would do no harm to its neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. So if you're feeling like things are complicated, like, it's just, it's too much. I can't handle it. Get quiet with the Lord and receive his peace because he is saying it is not complicated. It's so simple. Let's finish reading this in Matthew. I'm going to skip over a little bit. It says, Are you weary, carrying a heavy burden? Then come to me. I will refresh your life, your life, for I am your oasis. Simply join your life with mine. If you have accepted Jesus, then you become one spirit. You're one spirit with the Lord. That is joining our life with him and then remaining in that daily. Starting the day just with acknowledging, Lord, thank you. Thank you for creating me. Thank you for speaking to me. Thank you for redeeming me because of Jesus. 
the blood of Jesus. And you start your day like that and you just synchronize with heaven. And when we're speaking the word, that is syncing up with God's plan. It's not complicated. And he can just make little opportunities uh, for you to bless people. He'll put someone on your heart to pray for. He just wants to be intimately involved with every detail of our lives. Like we're just constantly with him, talking to him and receiving from him, walking in his peace. He is our oasis. And that's an oasis is like a water source, uh, refreshing. And all around is usually desert. And there's a lot of chaos around. You know, even at home, sometimes it can be chaotic. But we have a constant oasis with him if we will acknowledge it. And it's merely, and I, I wish you guys could have all listened to Daniel's message. It was so good. They were all really good. It was all powerful. I just love the, it's a decision. Yes, God, I'm going to walk in your peace right now. Or we could say, nope, I'm going to walk in chaos and I'm going to be frustrated and I'm just going to be negative and mad. You know, and Teresa said stuff like that too. It was really good. Or maybe it was the last time that she taught. <laughs> Um, we choose, we choose to walk in the peace or we choose not to. And it's just a simple choice. That's why he says, choose life, choose life. Simply join your life with mine, learn my ways, and you'll discover that I'm gentle, humble, easy to please. Here it is. God is easy to please. You don't have, he doesn't have this huge long list of everything that you need to do to make him happy. You know, he's happy when we come and sit with him and talk to him and rely on him as our source. Um, in Colossians, it talks about that. You receive from the source directly. Now, the Lord, a while ago, I think it was a couple months ago, corrected me about something. And I used to get nervous about the Lord's correction, you know, because just growing up, I had a stepdad that was very harsh in his correction. Like, you did something wrong, you'd kneel on like linoleum or whatever, tile floor for an hour or whatever. Like he, he learned that from his mother who also, they just had a really harsh punishment. They were very criticizing. And, and so I used to be afraid of correction. Like when I read those scriptures, the Lord disciplines those he loves. I would be like, oh, what? Discipline? Correction? I was, I was nervous about it. But the Lord's correction is very gentle. It's, and it's easy. It's when you're reading the word or when you're in your prayer time and he'll just bring something to us. And what happened is, you know, Emma was fighting something and I, I prayed and I trusted God. But then in my mind, I thought, well, I need to get some other people to pray. I need to get other people to pray. I need to get other people to agree with me that I know. And my thinking is that I know God will hear and God will listen to. But I know God hears me. So I was... Whew. And this is how God corrected me. He said, you know, it's, it's good to get agreement for prayer. It's fine if you go up and you have someone agree. And particularly if you are, you know, a new believer, you know, going up. And it doesn't, even, it doesn't say you have to be a new believer. Agreement is good. But we need to know that our prayers are enough, that our faith is enough. And this is where he really just, and it, it wasn't harsh. It was like a gentle, like, I love you so much you can receive directly from me, your father. At my house, I, I live with my mom <laughs> temporarily, but I lo it's actually pretty cool in many ways because if I don't like to bake, so if I want cookies, I'm like, Emma, go ask grandma to make cookies. I would ask Elia because he's the youngest, but he doesn't like cookies. What? Yeah, it's really strange. But so I'll ask Emma, I'll be like, Emma, because, why? Because grandma cannot resist Emma or Allie, you know, the little kids, me. They're like, mom, could I have some cookies? No, I don't want to make cookies. I mean, she will if I really beg her. But it's that kind of mentality, like you get the, the favorite to ask. I'm going to get someone that God favors more to ask because I don't know if he is going to answer me. Or I don't know if my prayers are enough, my faith is enough. And so... But, uh, and I, I felt like, oh my goodness, Father, I'm so sorry. It's true. It's because of having a guilt, con or like this consciousness that I'm not enough, that my, my faith is not enough, that I need someone else to agree with me. And I heard a teacher, and he, it was, the Lord teaches us with all of these different 
um, like just through the word, through different teachers. And it was another teacher and he was talking about how when someone has a headache or something, we'll pray and we'll, we'll believe. But then if something that's very serious like cancer or, you know, a, a disease that's, um, what's that called? That's potentially fatal, that we'll get these big, you know, we'll put up these websites and have everybody praying and have prayer visuals and everything. But with God, it's not a headache and cancer. It's not like it's, oh, we've really got to be asking him, you know, for the healing with this. We need to change our mindset on receiving directly from him for ourselves and when we pray for others. And there are no degrees of sickness like, oh, this one we're going to need to pray a little bit more and fast a little bit more. You know, that scripture and when Jesus said this one comes out with, by only prayer and fasting, that wasn't because the, the demon was so great in part. It was because the person's faith. So prayer and fasting does help us with our faith. So I do encourage you, fast a meal here and there, pray, because it builds our faith, and hearing the word builds our faith. But we need to stop thinking that we need somebody else to agree with us. If you were the only person in the world standing on God's word, it would be enough. Elijah was a man just like we are in James 5. It says he prayed, and it didn't rain for three and a half years. This is what he said. He said, Casey, if you're the only person to stand for what's right and to pray for healing for people, it is enough. You don't need to get all of these other people that you think are faith giants or God likes them a little bit more because, you know, they don't say so many bad words, whatever it is. <laughs> um, I, my prayers are enough. I am righteous only because of the blood of Jesus. Only because of the blood of Jesus. And I have power. When I lay hands on the sick, they recover. When I'm standing for my children, it is enough. It is enough. What Jesus did is enough. And so it was a loving rebuke, and he just gave me all of these examples. Um, in our faith, God has given us all a measure of faith. How do we increase it? This is what I've been seeking the Lord about also, is like, I know God, I know you're good. I know that you want us healed. I know you want these things to manifest more quickly. I know it's not you. I was praying for one of my friend's kids that was fighting a cough. And I was sitting there, and in my mind, Jesus was sitting there with me. And the, the little baby I was praying for, Jesus was holding that baby. And I looked at Jesus, and I'm like, I know. I don't even have to ask you to heal this baby because, I mean, you look in his eyes, and he is so loving. Oh, it's going to make me cry. He is so full of love that I know I don't have to ask him to heal because that's his heart. He wants his children well. So I said, Lord, all right, well, how do I get it to manifest? What do I need to do? Sorry. <laughs> I've been emotional all the time. <laughs> um, just realizing God's love. And he's been whew, just really impressing upon me his love. You know, the Fearless Conference was amazing, and that scripture in 1 John 4, 18, perfect love casts out fear. We know that perfect love, it's like you go to the, your father, and if you had a good earthly father, if you went to him and needed something, he's going to give it to you. He wants you to have it. How much more our Father in heaven wants to give things to us. So that was my struggle. I'm like, God, I know you're good. I know you're kind. How do I see these things happen more quickly? And and then after that, I listened to a teaching. I just, I'm, I prayed. I said, Lord, show me what you want me to listen to. I was listening to Randy Clark, one of his impartation uh, teachings. And Randy Clark was talking about someone that had been blind since they were four years old. They had acid, like, thrown in their eyes. And so their eyes were scarred, scar tissue. And a woman that nobody even knew prayed for this man for, like, five hours. Can you imagine? I don't know if she was just praying in the spirit or what. They didn't see anything. He didn't feel anything. And then three days later, he woke up and he had brand new eyes. And I was like, oh, Lord. That is... And he went to the doctors and the doctors said, can tell us what happened. They kept telling, can you just tell us again? how? Because all the doctors had seen him with just scar tissue, blind. And it had been 40 years and so the Lord just encouraged my heart that we may not see it instantly. 
and I know it's not him. He's perfect. He's perfect. We live in this fallen world, and we need to be content, peaceful, knowing, putting it in his hands and not struggling so much. I mean, I struggle when I don't see the results quickly when I'm praying for my kids, and I'm like believing they're going to stop coughing, and then they don't. It seems like the heat has been turned up a little bit lately because I'm really pressing in to this and I'm stepping out and I just want to pray for everybody and see manifestations of healing. So what does the enemy do? We know from the parable of the sower, when the word is sowed, the enemy comes to try to steal it immediately. You know, you get a revelation about healing and you're standing and then that night or the next day, you'll just have something attack your body because the enemy wants to make us believe that God is not good and that his word is not true. That's his, modus, that's his modus operandi. But if we will not give up, we will see it. We inherit the promises through faith and patience. Is that in Romans? I wrote it down, but I don't remember. I wrote so many scriptures down. So these testimonies, and I needed to hear that testimony about the man with, you know, for three days, didn't see anything, and then and so I thought, man, sometimes we let go of our confidence. We let go of our confession and we get disappointed if it's not immediate. But we need to know in him whom we believe, the Father who loves us and adores us. I mean, He, his love it is greater than anything we could ever imagine. And I pray that right now you are flooded with that love. We need times of refreshing. It says in, the, in Acts, that um, they would come and they would repent. You know, and repentance isn't so bad. It, people think, oh, you don't have to repent all the time. Repentance just means you turn your eyes back to the Lord. You're focused to the Lord. If your eyes have been on yourself, if your eyes have been on your circumstances, if you've been disappointed, you, repentance is turning your eyes back to the Lord, and then times of refreshing will come from His presence. And so I believe that He's refreshing every one of you that's listening right now because He is love. He's loving and he's not withholding anything good from you. He does not withhold anything good from those who seek him. Oh, I wish I had tissue. I'm sorry that I, whew, I was hoping that I wouldn't cry a little bit. Man, I turned into a crier. That's probably good, right? It's just God softening the heart. And I've been working on this song and I, I had the melody, I had the, um, the piano part for a long time and I didn't have any words. And I said, Father, Please just uh, give me the words. And I felt such passion when I would play it. And I thought it was going to be a passionate, like, worship song to the Lord. But, oh, thanks, Dad. <laughs> He's bringing me to tissue. But I th and I thought it would be, like, me to him. But the words are from the Lord to us. And, and I'll just tell you some of them because it's scripture. <laughs> In Isaiah, when he talks about your walls are ever before me. You are inscribed upon my hands. And I look at my hands, and a few weeks ago I had drawn, drawn on my hands everlasting love. I love you with everlasting love. Because that scripture, God said, you are inscribed upon my hands. A, nur a nursing mother, you might forget your child, but I cannot forget you. You are ever before me. You are inscribed on my hands. So every time I looked at my hands, I would see, I love you with an everlasting love. And Danielle's message reminded me of that too. I'm like, the hands are powerful. Choose life. Choose love. Choose peace. Look at your hands and know that you are inscribed on the palms of his hands. And that's a reference to Jesus, right? When he was crucified and he, um, someone that went to heaven, said that they talked to Jesus about um, the scars that he had. Because in heaven, you, you can have a new body. Everything is healed and new. But Jesus said, that he didn't want, I'm going to cry again, he didn't want the scars removed from his hands because he remembers what he did for us. I mean, not that he would forget, but it's, it's his memory of how much he loves us, how much God loved us, that he did that for us. So, so it's totally a mind blow. <laughs> and one day you guys will hear that song. I'm still working on it, but... It's just powerful, the love that God has. And if we know, if we truly know that love, and when he says, I am pleased with you, he means it. He is pleased with you. He loves you. He wants to reveal himself to you. 
he's saying, just draw near to me. Don't be afraid. Don't feel like, oh, I have all of these sins. I have all of these things. You know, sometimes when you come to God, it's like every bad thing that I've ever thought or done comes to your mind. It's kind of cool now for me because I've been walking with God long enough. Now I'm like, eh, just push it out <laughs> because I know it's under the blood. And God says he doesn't remember anymore as far as the east is from the west, even if it was a few minutes ago. It's totally gone. And he says, come to me, you who are weary, I will give you rest. And staying in that place where we are with him and knowing he's my father, he is going to take care of everything that I need, I don't have to be afraid. If I'm not supposed to do something, I'm going to have that little check that says, no, don't do that. And even if I make a mistake, he is big enough to fix it and kind enough. He is able to mend any situation. Let's see. I love that. Did I finish all of it? Oh, you'll discover that I am gentle, humble, easy to please. So God's not hard to please. He's not a taskmaster that has like a whoop saying, do this. Whew, you gotta do this or else, nope, you're not doing enough. Let me see what time it is. 7.47. It says, you will find refreshment and rest in me. I feel like so many of us are just burdened. We have these burdens of guilt and all the stuff that we need to do. And it, it, it's really cumbersome. It makes us like turn inward so that we're not able to reach out and help other people. You know, when we're stuck on our own issues and, and just not feeling like we're good enough, it turns us inward so that we cannot turn outward and, and look at other people and see what they need and help them. And that's really a tool of the enemy, um, just constantly putting thoughts in our heads, reminding us of what we should do, what we did do that was wrong, what we didn't do. And God wants to free us from that right now. I thank you, Father, for freedom for the minds of everyone who is listening. Freedom from everything that they believe that they should do, everything that they, they didn't do and all of the things that they did do. There's total freedom in Jesus. We are forgiven from all of the sins that we have ever committed and that we will ever commit. You lead us in what we are to do, and it's not a burden. It's not a struggle. And I thank you, Father, for revealing right now what the plan is you have for people. Like Jesus said, one thing is needful sit at his feet and then he is going to open the way so that it's easy to walk in his plan it's easy to walk in his plan he says the greatest among you will become the servant so i believe he's really going to redirect our hearts and our actions so that we're not fixated on ourselves anymore we know i'm forgiven i'm forgiven let's bring that to other people bring that love and encouragement and the acceptance that god has given us because he is our our oasis he is our refreshment and when there's dry dryness around when there's chaos around he refreshes our soul Ooh, i feel his presence so strong let me wipe my nose again i'm turning into a pretty emotional girl huh? i've actually i've always been pretty emotional but i just didn't like to show it because i thought it was weakness but I have a tender heart. Tender heart is good. <laughs> so I tell my kids, um, there's a teacher that I really like that teaches children. Um, and she says the four things to teach our children that are very important is um, just words to say. First is, I'm sorry. Second is, I love you, which is good. I used to have such a hard time saying I love you to anybody or anybody saying I love you. And this is our heart, keeping our heart right. So it's, I'm sorry, I love you, thank you. What's the fourth one? And I forgive you. Forgiveness is so important. So keeping our hearts right, we say, I'm sorry, quick to say I'm sorry, quick to forgive, quick to say I love you, and quick to say thank you. Is that pretty good? <laughs> I thought that was powerful. So I'm going to finish with this. It's easy to receive from the Lord. It's easy. He's made it easy. He said, you just, you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is, is the Son of God, that he was, that God rose him from the dead and you will be saved. That's it. 
for salvation. And everything in his kingdom is about receiving. It's about believing and receiving. And it's not about the works of the law. You know, people will get hung up and be like, well, it says faith without works is dead. That's true, but God does the works through us. Like our faith is, he empowers us when we believe. And then we just begin to walk in his love and his mercy and his forgiveness and compassion. So that's the works. It says, what are... What are our, what's our work? Our work is to believe and then to walk like Jesus walked, right? I'll get the scriptures for you sometime. Galatians 3, 5. Now, I was struggling with something. I don't remember what, but God brought me the scripture and he said, I want you to read every version of it out loud. So I got every English translation. This is why I like computers. You know, they have their disadvantages, but this is one benefit. Galatians 3, 5. He, therefore, that supplies to you the Spirit and it says supplieth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Amplified. So then, does he who supplies you with his marvelous Holy Spirit and works miracles among you do it as a result of the works of the law which you perform or because you believe confidently in the message which you heard with faith? This is going to set us free if we will really listen to it because it's not about doing it. Nobody could ever do everything perfect. You can't eat perfect. You're not going to be treating everybody perfectly. You know, the only one that is perfect is the Lord, and it says He is perfecting us. And if we rely on our works, they're, they're always going to fall short, but we rely on the blood of Jesus. So whatever it is that you need in your life, the Holy Spirit and we need miracles, right? So then does God give you the Spirit and work miracles among you by your doing the works of the law? Or is it by believing what you heard? You believe and you receive. That is how God's kingdom works. What about God who supplies you with the Spirit and works miracles among you? Does he do it because of your legalistic observance of Torah commands or because you trust in what you, or because you trust in what you heard and are faithful to it? And the Torah, there's like over 600 rules that they came up with. Woo! Jesus simplified it. What did he say? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. He makes it easy. Does God give you the Spirit because you follow the law? Does God work miracles among you because you follow the law? No. God gives you the Spirit, His Spirit, and works miracles among you because you heard the message about Jesus and believed it a few more i just have to i just have to read it because it's so good the living bible i ask you again does god give you the power of the holy spirit and work miracles among you as a result of your trying to obey the jewish laws are you trying to do everything right no of course not it is when you believe in christ and fully trust him just fully trust him who abandon ourselves to his love the message Answer this question. Does the God who lavishly provides you with his own presence? Now that's what God wants us to dwell with us. It says in John that he will come and make us our, his dwelling place. So give him opportunity to turn on some worship or just lift your hands and praise him. Get in the word because he wants to dwell with you and reveal things to you. All of us. Every one of his children. He provides, lavishly provides you with his own presence his Holy Spirit working things in your lives you could never do for yourselves. Does he do these things because of your strenuous moral striving or because you trust him to do them in you? So it's never by moral striving or trying to be perfect. It's because we trust him. Does Don't these things happen among you just as they happened with Abraham? He believed God and that act of belief was turned into a life that was right with God. I don't want you to get into condemnation with this either. Like, oh, but I had all these doubtful thoughts come in and all this, and I was looking at the natural. Just stop doing that then. Don't condemn yourself. Just stop looking at the natural. And look at the word. That's what Abraham did. He said, no. He looked only at him who is faithful. You read that in Hebrews. It's, it talks about Abraham, and it's really powerful. It was accounted to him as righteousness because he decided to trust God instead of looking at the circumstances, instead of looking at the deadness of his body. He was, you know, they couldn't have babies anymore. But he said, I trust you, God. You said it, therefore I believe it. It's that man faith. Remember, that if God said it, it's done. 
And even if it takes three days, it's going to happen. It doesn't matter how long. I believe also if we praise and worship and we just thank him. Chris said this, Chris Hogan, years ago, and it's always stood stuck with me that when he was praying for his son, he said he knew that he didn't have to keep asking God. You don't have to keep asking God. God is good. We thank him. We say, thank you, God. We know that you're working in this situation. We know you're turning it around, that the natural has to bow to the supernatural. The natural has to bow to the truth that God is the healer, that he's the provider. He's everything that we need. New Living Translation. I ask, I ask you again, does God give you the Holy Spirit and work miracles among you because you obey the law? Of course not. It is because you believe the message you heard about Christ. God is trying to get us away from this mentality that we need to do something, or if something goes wrong, what did I do? So I asked when Ellie, I got, you know, knocked in the head. I'm like, oh, man, did I not pray enough to, I'm like, no, I've been praying all day. And I know I'm praying the Holy Spirit. So, you know, these things happen sometimes, and God can turn it around, and our bodies are made to heal. So instead of start thinking about all the things that I could have done wrong, we need to stop and say, you know what? My Father works all things out for good in my life. He doesn't cause the bad things to happen, but he works them out for good, like Joseph. Joseph is one of my all-time favorite stories of man going to prison. He did all of that stuff, but God used it for good. He turned around. He knew what the, they were going to do. He knew what those brothers were going to do. They were going to be jealous, and he, he is such a mastermind. I mean, come on, think about it. God created the universe, like John was talking about on Sunday, the universe, God is a master mind, mind, <laughs> mastermind. He's a mastermind. He can turn anything around. You know, you think that it seems like, oh, it's impossible. This is one of my favorite things. God has the game board and he has the pieces. Everything is, he can turn what the enemy has meant for evil for good because he knows. He's like a million steps ahead. He already knows. So that's why we get in touch with him and then he shows us what to do so when something just comes out of the blue it just know that god's going to work it out he's going to turn it around we trust in him completely the passion translation is what i'm going to end with let me ask you again what does the lavish supply of the holy spirit in your life and the miracles of god's tremendous power have to do with you keeping religious laws the holy spirit is poured out upon us through the revelation and power faith. Ooh. We all have measure of faith. God has given it to us. So we use that measure of faith and receive. And I believe he's speaking to you now. He's showing you. He's teaching you. He's telling you if you've had questions, he wants to answer them. He's leading you and guiding you into all truth. And if you don't know the why right now, Rest knowing that he is so kind and so good that he is not withholding anything good from you. Stop struggling and rest in his love. Perfect love casts out all fear. You will see the manifestation of what he has promised you. It has to manifest because God is not a man that he can lie. He cannot lie. If you will hold fast to the word hold fast to what he's spoken to you you will see the manifestation and i believe for manifestation right now <sighs> it is so wonderful when desire comes and says in proverbs when the desire comes it is a tree of life so just expect that that he is giving you the desires of your heart he is bringing into fruition what you have been believing for his timing is perfect and if you feel like it has been um, withheld wrongly from you you take a stand you say in jesus name no more we will not have lack we will not have um, hindrances to what god has promised we are healed we have provision in jesus name it's something important to remember is that the enemy will try to come in but he cannot keep it from you you keep you stand your ground having done all to stand ephesians 6 you stand and it has to manifest Think of the wonderful testimonies of standing for months. I stood for months for Emma, and I brought her home. People have stood for years for things. That man who had the blind eyes, and it was three days before he saw the manifestation. There's so many more awesome testimonies like that. Don't give up. 
you will reap because God is faithful. All right, I love you guys. I will, um, next week I think mom is teaching, or Danielle, I'm not quite sure. And then we're going to take a little break for Thanksgiving and Christmas, the most wonderful time of the year, which uh, we're going to start living in the most wonderful time of the year all the time because God's doing awesome things in the land. So I shalom, the Lord bless you and keep you. His face shines upon you. He's gracious to you. His countenance has risen upon you, and you are established in his shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. All right, guys, thank you.